Oh, uh, Brian Forrest here, host of Grindstone Workshop, the show where we make props and costumes from the mobile RPG Summoner's War. Uh, you see, Robert texted me and told me to meet him here, but I am not sure why we're in this creepy alley, though. Once and for all. That's right, you came out to support? I would never support you. Challenge? Uh, I, I, I don't know. This week, I want you to throw down with Diaz's flail. Oh, cool. But can that weapon smoke? Oh, oh uh, I don't think it's old enough. What? What? No, like fog. Oh. I, I want fog to come out of that weapon yeah. just like in the game. That makes a lot more sense, yeah. You've seen my moves. <laughs> Let's see what you've got. Oh. If you're better than me, forget about the flail. Take the week off. Okay, yeah, game on. Do you need mouth to mouth? Okay. That's a yes. Ah, welcome back to our home within Ian's home. Um, you told me yesterday this was your house. You know what? Let's move on, okay? Because this week, we're finally gonna get to forge a real weapon for the Death Knight Dias, his mighty flail. But before we get started, there is a catch. It needs to actually smoke, so we're gonna need to do some experimenting. All right, yeah, I think I have a few ideas, and we'll see where we go from there. Excellent, all right, let's light the fire, start pouring some molten metal, get some sparks flying, and hammer everything inside! What are you talking about? We're just gonna be working out of foam, man. Oh. Now, looking at this this foam sphere here, it looks kind of fragile. Are we, gonna, are we gonna paint that directly? No, no, no. We're actually going to take the PVC scraps that we saved from last week, uh -huh. we're gonna be gluing them on there, and then we're not gonna have to even make it very, very good. It's gonna be like a really janky looking mosaic. Uh, and rough forged, if you will. From there though, those gaps, we're gonna fill that in with the auto body filler from last week. And then from here, the last part is we're gonna use the, the stick end of this flail that I, I bought online, super cheap. Terrifying. Yeah, it's terrifying. We're gonna be using that as our base for holding the actual weapon, because we actually need this to be strong. Danger balls, and then Johnny's gonna use the rest for our actual weapon. Ha -ha! Oh, 
hey Johnny, look. I cut the first one off. Just two more and we'll be good to go. You know you could have just used the pliers, right? Oh. Well, that's not as fun. All right, so now that we got the murder bits off of the cheap flail that I got, now for the handle, we're gonna start cutting off the, the string off here, and then we're gonna be putting on PVC foam for the pommel and the rest of the handle. Awesome, oh, to really build it up and give it shape without making it crazy heavy. Exactly. So while the paint dries, how do you feel about uh, going out back and throwing down with some real flails? I am really, really excited for that. All right, testing phase. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the testing space. I have collected quite a few delectable instruments for us to test. Holy flails, were these real? <laughs> yeah, actually, that is a very common misconception that a lot of people think flails didn't exist in real history. You know, it's only a fantasy weapon or something like that. But with the advent of the internet and museums starting to digitize their catalogs, we've actually found a lot of examples in 15th century tapestries and art of these being used. They were still very rare, but they did exist. And they were actually kind of a modification of a farmer's threshold, you know, where they're actually hitting wheat and stuff with a big log attached to another log and trying to knock out all that wheat, thus separating the chaff from the wheat. Oh, thank you, Ian. All right. Hey, go grab his toaster. All right, I'll go get it. That was fun. Yeah, I love a good testing segment. <laughs> okay, so I've got some, some hot water and some dry ice, and I was thinking. Oh, wow. Time to get Wahaha, I am Diaz, Death Knight. Okay, uh, that's pretty excessive. Uh, what do you think, though? I, you know what? The, the effect is really cool, but I don't think it's really practical for when you're out and about in your costume. And on top of that, you can't turn it on and off when at will. Imagine trying to use the bathroom with this thing. That would be awkward. Yeah. Plus, once it dissipates, it is kind of over. All right, well, what's your idea? All right, so I got this vape pen, and I took it apart, and now we can put fog machine fluid in here, which is super cheap, and we can turn it on and off with our switch over there, and the only thing I haven't figured out is how exactly to force the smoke out of there. Oh, like we need some sort of pump or something that's gonna circulate the air that as the fog is created is being pushed out of the flail. Exactly. And I put a small air, like uh, air pump right here, oh. using fish tanks, yeah. so we pu push that in. We got a little bit of fog coming out of there. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's the, the fog liquid is pretty cheap. And these things are so small that we can put a ton of them inside the flail. Awesome, and the funny thing is, is it really does still look like a dry ice effect, but it's controllable with a switch, and so that way you can save it for when it really counts. Exactly. Excellent day, and this cosplay is definitely coming together. Although, I'm afraid that we probably won't be able to take the smoke effect to the convention, right? 
Uh, probably not. They don't really look at very kindly on that. Yeah. What the? What? What? What do we do? Uh, uh. Yeah, it was Brian again. I took care of it. Yeah, you were right. He does scare off easily. How's Cabo? Hey there, thanks for watching this week's episode of Grindstone Workshop. Be sure to check back every week for a brand new episode. And be sure to like Skybound Games on Facebook and follow our good friends over at Comp to us. Until then... Ryan, what are you doing here? We were just finishing up. Go, go.